we've got quite a bit of snow on the ground, but we finally have blue skies. Okay, they're a little hazy, but they're blue. So, I've got the Isheen flying fish out here again. You know, launch it in manual mode. Maybe we can see it now that it's somewhat blue sky out. Get down here by the road. It's like I'm going to have a snow covered runway today. That's all right. Maybe it'll cushion the landing gear a little bit. We got four to five miles per hour wind out here today. Okay, let's launch it into the wind. 50% throttle. Sweet. And as I stated, we are in manual mode. Stay out of the sun. Plenty of power. <laughs> I do love that. I love that a lot. Oh, that is a nice, nice flying plane. It's a micro plane that flies like a larger one. I bet you guys can see it today, can't you? Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. I increased the dual rate on the ailerons just a little bit and also increased the uh, Expo on the ailerons just a little bit and that seems to have worked out pretty well. It still feels really smooth I'll give me a little little snappier rolls. I'm kind of playing around with the um, CG here a little bit I noticed when I had it out last time and I was doing rolls with it. They weren't as axial. I had the I had it on the CG with a completely neutral balance, and it seems like it, it wants the CG, you know, for a really good balance, just a slight bit forward of the specified CG, maybe just, a, you know, a couple millimeters forward. Those are much axial, better axial rolls with that balance, so... So I've moved my CG up just a couple of millimeters. I'll measure it to make sure no more than three millimeters forward to where the specified CG is, but it seems to like it there. And it's, it's staying nice and level. It's well behaved. Still zooms a little bit. It's a low to mid speed, you know, power glider basically. And so it has a pot of positive angle of attack on the main wing, which gives it a little bit better lift for slow flight. And um, one way that you could overcome that, or two ways I suppose you could overcome that, is to put a little bit more down angle in the motor. I'm not sure that would be the best way to do it because it maintains its attitude very well at cruising speed it's only when you go full throttle that you get some zooming out of it so i would say the best way to do it would probably be to mix in a little bit of down elevator with the throttle maybe above 50 percent you know so it, it keeps the plane level i don't know if that would take care of all the zooming but it would probably take care of a lot of it i don't know if i'll do that or not um, it's not a speed plane. I like going full throttle with it once in a while, but I will take maneuverability over speed every time. But isn't that a nice, that's a nice handling plane. It's another one of those micros like the, uh, the Aeros Pioneer. It's just, it's a little plane that flies like a much larger plane. And, I, I think that that, for these micros, these sub-250 gram micros, I think that that 24-inch wingspan minimum, look at the power, guys. Nice. I think that that minimum, a 24-inch wingspan on these micros, 
really um, seems to be the sweet spot on these. Okay, so let's come back through here now that we've got some blue skies. Before I go through the entire battery pack here, let's just see what kind of vertical it has now that we can see it. Okay, ready? Guys, that was still climbing when I leveled off. <laughs> and I started that from a slow speed. <laughs> yeah, so it has it has a lot of power. Really surprised me when I saw those 11, two 1105 motors and those three blade 3016 props. I thought, yeah, it's gonna, it's probably gonna carry it pretty well, you know. But um, but is it really going to have adequate power? And I, I'm really surprised. But with these dual motors on here, I'm really surprised at how much power this thing has. You guys saw that vertical, right? And it was still going. I leveled off. <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled back on the throttle and leveled off. Okay, so I've gone through my timer. So let's see if we could stay below the sun here. That, that direction looks good. That direction looks good. I don't know if I'll have much traffic out here today because of the weather, because it's fairly cool out. And we got a lot of snow on the ground. We'll see if we can bring this in manual mode again. All right, here we come. Let's see if we can get it over here lined up with our snow-packed runway. Let's see if we can slow it up a bit. Oop, a bounce. All right. No harm, no foul. All right, I got to remember that now that I've got the nose a little bit heavier, I need a little more. I need a little more back pressure on the elevator when I'm bringing it in for a landing. <laughs> so I didn't quite. I pulled back on the elevator like the way I had it balanced before, where it was a little lighter in the nose, and so it rotated a little more easily. Um, now that I've got the nose a little bit heavier, I have to remember that. And, uh, and move the stick more to bring the nose up. But um, what fun, what fun. Okay, so I will meet you back at the hangar and I'll give you my conclusion on this little microplane. I'm gonna put some more flights on it. So I will see you back there. So what are my thoughts on this plane? Well, I haven't even topped out the motors yet because it, it gets so small so fast when I'm pulling vertical. I have not even let this plane climb vertical as high as it could climb because I was afraid I was going to lose orientation on it. So I let it climb so high vertically and then I uh, pull back on the throttle, roll it over and pull through a split S maneuver. So that shows you how much power it's got, and that was after I added 17 grams of landing gear to it. <coughs> I have already posted my setup and OpenTX model file for this plane. I am definitely golden on the setup on this. It flies like a, it really surprised me, but it flies like a twin motor bush plane. It is so stable and so well behaved. The dramas are not an issue. All it does is drop the nose and go on. Uh, I fly it mostly in manual mode. And I'm amazed at the, the slow flight capability that it has, the white, white flight envelope that it has. It can actually push through the air very fast. And how aerobatic it is. I think they got just about everything right on this plane. Uh, it is one of the best sub 250 gram microplanes that I have flown ever. That's how much I like this plane. And what I really love about this plane, and what I mean by they got just about everything right on this plane, I didn't have to do any modifications to it. I didn't have to change the motors. I didn't have to change the prop. I didn't have to change the ESC. I didn't have to, I don't have to move any control surfaces because it has a very lethargic roll rate. I mean, they've got, and, they have, and it has room here for flaps. If you want to put flaps in it, I don't think it needs them. Uh, 
it has very good slow flight capability. I don't need it. I don't think it needs flaps, but you certainly have a lot of space there to put flaps in it if you choose to do so. The only thing that I had to do is the same thing I have to do to all my planes, center up the servos, center up the control surfaces, sort out the CG, and the only thing that I had to do other than that was move the control linkage rod for the rudder from uh, down one hole on the servo arm so that I had a little more movement on the rudder and that is the only thing I had to do to this plane. It has been a long time since I had flown a micro plane where some type of modification was not required and this plane is very inexpensive. I think the last time I checked at the US warehouse it was like $105.99 for this plane. Okay, it's made out of EPP foam. It's extremely durable. It's sub 250 grams. I've got 17 grams of, of landing gear on it, which pushed it to 238 grams. And you saw how much power it had, even with the additional 17 grams. I still have enough uh, room to put an all-in-one FPV camera on it if I want to, and I'll still be under 250 grams, even with the landing gear. If, uh, if you have a nice grassy area to land in, you're going to be 17 grams lighter than I am. I mean, it's a uh, sub-250 gram brushless microplane that has just about everything correct on it. So I can't recommend this plane enough. I want to thank Banggood again for saying this for review because this is a fantastic little plane and I think at a very fantastic price. Uh, I'll have a link to it in the show notes, along with a couple of lipos that you could use in it. Um, I think I also have a link in there to the Bind A gyro, which I have installed in it, and a couple of different S-Bus receivers, which I've used so far. So, um, there is absolutely no reason um, not to recommend this plane. It's, it's absolutely fantastic, and it flies what I was really surprised of, too. It doesn't fly like a glider. It flies like a twin motor bush plane. I mean, it really surprised me, but, you know, I like to go, I, I like to do some slow flight and do my, what I call roller coaster turns, where I'll, I'll, I'll go up at a pretty good angle and then just kick the rudder over and let it spin around, cut the throttle and just let it kind of glide back down and level out. And uh, I was, I put flights on it after this video and just had a fantastic time with this plane and was surprised at just how stable, how stable it is. It's a micro plane that flies like a much larger plane. And uh, I recently reviewed another one like that, which was actually a bush plane, but it has very lethargic rolls on it. So this one does not. This one has very snappy rolls and I still have, I think my, my dual rate on my ailerons is at 75%. So. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you really want fast rolls, you've got a lot of room there for really fast rolls. And I think I only have, I think I only have 70% dual rate on the elevator, 100% rate on the rudder. But I still have plenty of room for additional control surface movement if I wanted it. But I've got it to the point now where I have really good control authority on it. And it's also very, very smooth, which is what I like. I like having a lot of control authority, but I don't like it to be twitchy. I want it to be very smooth, and this one is. So that's my conclusion on this plane, man. I am, I am extremely happy with this, and for the price, you guys won't go wrong with this plane. It's absolutely fantastic, and it has tons of power, and it's very aerobatic. And I was surprised at how axial the rolls are, given that that's a, you know, a, a top wing glider and it has a positive angle attack on the wing. So I was really surprised at how nice and crisp and axial the rolls were on this. So I've got absolutely no complaints about this plane whatsoever. And I'm so happy I didn't have to do any modifications to it. So anyway, that's my conclusion. There'll be links to it in the show notes. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.